Yeah, so like I was saying, your, your paragraphs should all come together, okay, in a coherent manner, okay? And also avoid errors uh, in the write-up write of your introduction section, okay? Then again, with regards to facts you are pre presenting, let's say diagrams or citations, okay? They should be factual. Don't mislead your readers, okay? You cannot bring a graph from maybe Pobi et al and assign it to somebody else. Uh, that is plagiarism. So take note of that when you are writing your introduction sector, section to present what accurate facts. Okay, let's move on. So we have an example of um, the background, okay, of the study. Now we've already seen this topic, which this researcher did, and um, he was looking at instructional um, leaders and performance. Now this is a section, I mean, the first paragraph, so it means we'll go to the work and then see how the paragraphs connect. So the first paragraph says what? The role of school leaders toward the improvement of school outcomes is regarded by policymakers and practitioners as vital, okay? Head teachers also refer to us. So you see, he's giving an overview of what we mean by an instructional leader, okay? He comes down from head teachers to the fact of instructional leadership. So you can see at the tail end, uh, he says instructional goals are realized by leaders, uh, are realized when leaders communicate them to their followers and influence all persons within the institutions toward us achieving them. That is the first paragraph, okay? So he set the pace for you to understand who he means by, or what he means by an instructional leader, okay? Then again, another thing you need to take note of is your citations as we go along, right? You can see that we've cited this document. Look at how it is cited. Mm? Now, if it's coming before, okay, before the sentence, this is how it goes. So you use only the surnames. So this is somebody's surname. The go to is another person's surname. They is another person's surname and then co is a surname. We don't bring first names or middle names, okay? So for me, it's going to be Pobi 2011, okay? If it's one person, just the, the surname without a comma, but if it's three or four, with the first usage of the name, which is um, using APA format version six, it's going to be Simon's Good Day and Cool. Okay, so and then when the citation is coming at the end of the sentence, you see, after you've made a sentence and you are bringing it at the end, it's still going to be surname. Then instead of A and D, okay, you use the cumbersome. Oh, sorry, the ambassam. Sorry, uh, uh, that's the notation for end. And then you use the second author surname. And then bring the comma, okay? You always bring the comma followed by the date of publication. After that, the full stop comes. So the full stop ends after the citation. Don't bring the full stop before the citation. Take note of that, okay? So this is the first, the introductory paragraph for the background of the study, right? We want to go and look at it more and then see how uh, coherent the various paragraphs with different sections come together to give us an overview or the context of our study, okay? So let's clear the screen. So this is what we just saw, okay? So yes, please. Come again. Come again with your point. Let's look at our introduction. We are going to the background, like we said. So we've looked at the first, we look at the first paragraph. 
okay, which set the tone. He's defining who an instructional leader is. Then he talked about a visionary, okay, still talking about instructional leadership, what he's supposed to do, his activities. Uh, and here you can see from this paragraph that he has actually defined three main components. So he has set the tone for his, his topic. He says, and this happens through what? Improvement of three key variables. You see in his work, he talked about what? School climates, uh, instructional leadership, and then he talks about use of instructional materials. So he has set the tone for what? The school climate, which is the first variable, instructional and learning process, which is the second variable, and then what? Access to teaching and learning materials, which is the third variable. So he's used the, two, the first two paragraphs to define who an instructional leader is and then his role of the instructional leader. So first paragraph is who is a leader? How does he correlate with people? The second one is what are his functions? That is the second paragraph. Then from his functions or the functions of a leader, okay, you will see that this researcher moves on to Mm -hmm. They are different, different teams, but you see, they all come together to establish why we must have a leader and why a leader leads to performance. Okay. Then the third one talks about um, how Ghana has inputted uh, a lot of resources, okay, into the educational sector. But he says the nation still recognizes the need to improve the access to quality secondary education. Then when you go down, he talks about how much spending has been made. But the next paragraph says that this huge financial outlays and investment along with major education reform have resulted in some significant improvement in enrollment. However, when you come here, it says, but there remains some what? Despite the improved enrollment, okay, there remains a gap between government spending and what? Educational learning output, which are the performers. You understand? So he's told you that government has inputted a lot of money, invested a lot of money to increase what? Performance and quality of education. But there is still a serious gap because beyond all the investment they were making, a lot of people were failing in mathematics, English, and the core subject in the senior high school, okay? For a very long time. So what is the issue? You get it. So when you look at it, he told you leadership is the issue. You need a leader to move things around. And he's also told you that the government has done so much, but we are not seeing results. So the next thing, the next story he's going to tell you is, uh, well, let's go down. So as he's going down, now he gives an overview of performance for about 10 years. You see, performances are declining in English, math, and science. So government is investing, but performance is dropping in WASI examinations. So the question, what is the problem? Teachers have been trained. So what is the problem on the ground? And this Richard side is saying, it is the head teachers who need to up their game and know their responsibilities. If we can get head teachers to work, then we can improve on performance. You see his discussion. Uh -huh. So when you look at the background, already I'm getting the picture of where this person is going to. Mm -hmm. I know that he's going to talk about school climate. He's going to investigate school climate on performance. He's going to investigate the head teacher's role in what? Um, instructing leadership. That I mean, tuition and learning in class. Okay. And then his um, supervision over or access to learning materials. He's talked about these three things. And he's saying that when these things are well supervised, it will lead to performance. That's just what he's saying. You see, now let's go on. Okay, so you realize that all the, this is also an absenteeism, eh? the level of absenteeism in, in the country. Okay, he's very detailed. So he talks about absenteeism in Ghana, in Brazil, in Morocco and Tunisia. And you realize that, you see, when it comes to Ghana, eh? <laughs> the learning days, the number of days we, we spend in school is less. And the teacher absenteeism is more. Teacher delays is more than other countries. 
you get it. So <laughs> we have issues with teacher absenteeism and issues with learning in school. So this is a statistic. And then once he provides it, he also gives you the author, eh? the, the evidence of the facts. Don't just put facts there and uh, assume that it is coming from you. Once you put a fact there, put the source of the author, okay, for verification. It's very, very important in every research work. Good. Now let's proceed. So this guy has, this researcher, okay, has clearly stated the background. He's giving you everything. In fact, he's even coming down to give us, you see, he says, first, eh? you read here, he says, first, the analysis of roles of um, a, a leader's a leader's role in defining school mission focuses to focuses on two functions: framing school, clear school goals, and communicating school school goals. So he talks about the leader and how it comes down to affect what the performance of the students. Okay. Then finally, he tells you what he wants to do in this work. So as he's going to the very tail end, he says what. Well, Specifically, okay, the study sought to find out or to identify how school leadership roles in, in the management of learning resources, um, teacher teaching, learning, teacher teaching and learning process, and management of school climate factors, okay, prescribed in the conceptual model relates with student academic performance. Okay, so in every background. After you have talked about the problem and the facts on the ground, okay, telling us clearly that there is a problem, you also have to tell us what you want to do in your summary of the background, okay? So that will be the last paragraph within your background. Now let's go back. We have seen an example of various teams on instructional leadership and performance and how they all come together coherently eh, to give us the context or the background to the study, okay? That is how your background should look like. Now, we have a relationship here. What I have here, when you look at it carefully, it says a background, okay, gives, a platform for the problem statement. Your problem statement logically emanates from your background, okay? So we for, you formulate your problem statement from the background. Hmm? After you've written your background, everybody should see that this is the problem and you should also come and crystallize it, that this is the problem and this is how I want to solve it. Good. Then the next phase is because you have stated the problem statement in the second step, after you state the problem statement, then what is left for you to do is, how am I going to address it? So first you need to state what your objective, your objective too will come out of your problem statement. Okay, or sometimes we come out with research questions. Eh? Now research questions and objectives. Uh, work hand in hand. And we'll come to research question. I'll explain that to you. So out of your problem statement, you have some key questions you want to answer. Okay, because when we, when we answer it, then we have findings for innovation. But those questions are the operationalization of your objectives, right? Then the final stage is you need to indicate the irrelevance of those questions you're asking. You don't just ask questions. You understand? We don't just ask questions. Eh? We don't just get up, ask any question. And uh, the other day I had a presentation where a student came with a presentation that um, quite a number of people, okay, are getting sick within the community because they don't have access to, um, okay, um, a, a hospital, okay, a, a, a care facility. That is the background. Mm -hmm. Then it comes with a problem statement that um, quite a number of people, uh, pregnant women, have okay lost their lives 
as a result of this. That was also fine. Then in the objective to develop a hospital facility for this thing. No, you see at that point, you are entirely wrong because your, your study is not to go and build for people. We will be looking at that, okay? Your study is not supposed to go and build for people. That is not what research is into. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you finish that, you realize that there is no significance. There is no, I mean, when you build a structure, how important is it going to be for studies? Or how important is it going to be for, I mean, practice? It, it really doesn't add up to anything. Building a structure, something like a borehole, you build a borehole and so what? We are ended with a borehole. It's not an object of research again, okay? So such an, a, a project or such a question or such a topic, okay, building or development of borehole community, no, 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 no. That is not a research question. And that is not a research topic. Do you get it? So clearly, when you have a good background, it should lead to your problem statement. Your problem statement, if it's good, will lead to the question, the possible question, because as the reader is even reading, he is thinking of some questions which you, the researcher, might not have even thought of. So you as a researcher need to come out clearly with the questions and the objectives which you want to settle in your research, okay? Good. Some questions too are not answerable within a particular scope of time. Eh? If I give you some research, you may have to take like three or four years to finish that research. You cannot answer it, okay, at this level. So you clearly need to cite research questions and objectives which can be answered within the time frame. Then finally, there should be a significance of everything that you are studying. Okay, that is the linkage. So there is a direct flow and a linkage between your background, your problem statement, your objectives, and research questions, and the significance of your study. Good, now let me touch on the problem statement because that is also a very key element in your in your research. Now, please listen carefully. Okay, listen carefully. Research problem formulation is not the same as research problem statement or the uh, statement of problem. They are two different things. Okay, the research problem formulation is the problem you are interested in, okay, which gives rise to the topic you are looking at. Eh? When you are formulating a problem, hmm, it, it leads you to the topic, okay, for study. So like I use the malaria case, for example, we all know that there is a solution to malaria. Eh? There are drugs for malaria. When you take them, you get well. So um, malaria is a problem, but it's not a problem. Okay, it's a problem in the sense that people are still dying from malaria. Okay, mm -hmm. but it's not a problem because there is a drug to cure malaria. But it becomes a problem to a researcher. Okay, when the researcher begins to talk about access to the drugs, malaria treatment, that is the real problem. Okay, now in access to malaria drugs too, if there has not been, if there has been studies on the access to malaria drugs within the context, then that is also not a problem because by all means they would have made recommendations in that regard. Do you get it? But we can also look at another subject within the same problem or within the same topic. Eh? Somebody can say that, okay, now the malaria drugs available, okay, also have some side effects or people are not recovering fast enough from these drugs. So there is need for another type of drugs where people can recover fast. That is a problem. And by the time you finish answering that problem, you would have come up with what? An innovation. You get it, a novelty. In the case of the access, if there is no study on access and you go out there and then go and find out what really is the issue 
there is drug, but people are not accessing it. And you're able to find out uh, the, how the access is really influencing people's okay, curing times or recovery from malaria. Then you are coming up with what? A novel studies. You are adding up to knowledge. Do you get it? So all these things we are talking about are problem formulation. How do I move around the same topic to come out clearly with a problem I want to study? That is problem formulation. And it goes through different stages, okay? Before you formulate your problem or your topic, you need to go through identifying a subject area like we discussed in class, uh, defining a problem which you want to look at, uh, a very large problem. Then you read literature to find out what has been done and what has not been done so that you can scope down to a topic you can address or something you can add up to knowledge, okay? Then when you even do that, you ask yourself, can I go about this research? What design should I use? What data collection tools do I use? Okay. Now, if I can't get the data, there is no need of you proceeding with such a, such a problem. You understand? And I expect you to ask questions here at this point. Now, I had a situation where a student came, he says he's going to look at um, how financial accounting affects the performance of um, um, uh, certain selected financial sectors, okay? Now, fine, we all know that accounting is a very major part of what companies, um, le let me say, the company's progress and performance, okay? But the question is, when you get to data collection point, which financial sector wants to review, how, I mean, the accounting, their books to you? Nobody is willing to do that, okay? They are going to give you wrong information. You get it. So if you formulate a problem, you need to go through all the stages. Sometimes when you get to the design, you have problems. Then you have to drop that topic because it's not feasible. Eh? If you don't have an insider, you will not get the data. Never. You understand? Never. You will not get the data. Mm -hmm. So there are certain topics. Sometimes to, to even get the data, you need to destroy certain living organisms eh? uh -huh. to do that. And people are not happy about that. You remember quite recently when they wanted to come and um, run um, a COVID trial in Africa and for that matter in Ghana. Eh? You saw our reactions, okay? People were not happy with um, coming from some huge fund um, uh, managers, okay? Good. So you see, when it gets to those points, we have issues. So certain topics drop as a result of methodological issues and data issues. Uh, you are interested in the topic, but there is no way you get the data. So you have to change your topic. Now, all that we have said, this is not the, the, the statement of the problem. This is problem formulation. Problem formulation leads to what topic. So it's the first step, okay, in research. It leads to your topic, okay? But it is not your statement of problem, right? Good. Now, the question is, what then is the problem of statement? We've already said that the statement of the problem, it comes out of your background, the real issue, okay, which you are looking at. Malaria can be an issue, it cannot be an issue. But if you look at it from one angle and you realize that nobody has done it, that angle becomes your problem you are looking at and it becomes the problem of everybody because they don't have knowledge in that area. Now, let me finish up on this. Then I take some questions because I need to get some questions here. Now, in every problem statement, there should be a clear statement of the problem. Okay, sometimes we say a clear background to the problem. Okay, then you also have to document prior research um, 
on that on that problem okay so you need to give us an overview of studies that have been done let's say if it's on malaria what has been done on malaria okay in relation to the subject you are looking at do you understand so that we can clearly see the gap. So whilst we are reading, we can see that, ah, these people have not done this. Then you come and state what has not been done as your gap. Okay? And then the final step in the problem statement is you have to tell us why you have to address that missing gap or that missing knowledge in research. Okay? So let's take some example a demonstration on this one. Look at it carefully. I want you to, to read it. I'm giving you some minutes to read. Then we continue on. Thank you. Good. So let's take let's take that section again. Uh -huh. So like I was saying, after he's giving an overview of the problem, he talks about the gap, what the people have failed to do. Okay, and it is clearly stated in this lie. There is no ambiguity about it. You get it. Then after that, he tells you why he has to talk about it. Okay, he tells you what he did and why he has to talk about it in the problem statement. So in the problem statement, make sure you clearly outline what the problem really is. Okay, what people have done give us some recent studies in relation to that particular topic don't go talking about other things go straight to your point your subject you are looking at and find i mean studies around it okay now somebody will say that ah, how do i get studies around my topic okay now let me help you to do that in citing your problem statement it means that you have prior um studies or you have done some prior literature review okay of key studies let's go and take some some subjects now let's do this practically let me stop here then we go online okay let's go online and then see how we can assess okay certain topics okay related to our topic so let me take I'm going to take um, a topic from one of you. One of you should give me your topic so that we use that for the practical. So let me have a topic from one of you and let's search. So whilst you are preparing to give me your topic, we will go to I'm sure you can see my screen now. I'm on Firefox. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type, okay, Google Scholar. So I'm going to type Google Scholar. So that is Google Scholar here. Okay. Now, when we type Google Scholar, please just type your your topic for me those i mean type your topics in the chat for me let, let me work with it so when we get to google scholar we can click on google scholar here okay it will it will take you to a whole um, search engine where you have quite a number of publications okay accessible to you Yeah. So bring the topic. So let's have the topic. Yeah, causes of road accidents. Causes of road accidents. Just please type the topic for me and let me just put it in. The causes of road accidents. Causes of road accidents. Uh -huh. So when you when you have 
you want to identify factors leading to road accidents where mm -hmm. where are you looking at this study in accra in ghana in i mean africa which country in accra in accra okay in accra. yes so accra, when you just ghana. when you say causes of road yeah. accidents eh, we all know the causes but if you look at factors okay. that influence, factors that influence means one, you are looking at the factors which are the causes, and you're also looking at the influence on what? Road accidents in Accra. Okay. So let's go online. We'll, we'll type the keywords or we can even start with the topic itself. Okay, so causes or factors influencing okay, road accidents in Accra, then we enter. So look at it carefully. Now, these are the set outputs, okay? You can modify the publications. You can make it since maybe 2019. Okay, if we want, if we want very recent studies, okay? We can start from where 2019 or from maybe 2018. Huh? So let's customize our range. We are going to start from studies from 2018 to 2023. Okay. So that we use very recent studies. Then after that, you click on search. Good. Now, when we click on set, these are some of the studies we are having here. It says one, managing traffic congestion in Accra Central Market. You see, it's somebody's problem. Uh -huh. So how does, uh, how do they manage congestion there? That's somebody's problem. That is not your problem. Now, the next person says modeling trend of road accidents in Ghana. Okay. If this person is using um, regression analysis, then it means that he's the person, he or she, oh, look at this. This is, um, this is my, um, that's HOD. Have you, have you noticed? This is HOD, Mr. Darcy and uh, Mr. Datsin. Are you seeing that? Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. I said, have you noticed that this is a paper from our previous HOD and the uh, exams office? Have you noticed? Yes, Mr. Darcy and yes. Men's Blue. Yes. They are the authors of this document. Yes. So you can easily access the document. You can download it by clicking on the right side. Once I download PDF, okay, it will click on the, it will download the document for, for your review. So I'm downloading now. Aha. Uh -huh. So I have this paper saved, okay? And I'm very sure modeling trend of road road as traffic accident i'm very sure that they use a regression analysis let's look at their paper want to see what they did Okay, so this is the paper they published. Mm. So modeling by, okay, four of the our researchers, okay, in school. Now we have the abstract going down. Let's look at their methodology. Because it will, it will advise us whether the topic we are going to do 
has already been done. So you see, he is talking about human factors, vehicular factors, road environmental factors. Hmm? Good. Then we go down, let's check what was done. Um, Persis Egypt, number of cases. These are the number of cases over the year. Then you can clearly see that there is a regression analysis here. Okay, so we have three factors with a regression analysis and the R squared was good. So clearly there has been what? A study on the factors of what? Road accidents, okay, within Ghana in 20 what? In Accra, in what? 2018. Which means that if we are going to uh, conduct any study on that same topic, which is factors influencing road accidents, that work has already been done. You see, that work has already been done by these researchers. You understand? Hello, class, do you understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions for me? No, please. No, there should be questions. This is the practical session. So let's say your topic, if, if anybody has another topic, bring it up. Because this first tech topic, we can clearly see it's been done. So you need to go for another topic. The yeah, topic that I had in the research. Please come again. So you said you want a topic that I had in the research. Yeah. Yes, another topic. Let's let's just check whether such a topic has been done or it's not been done. Then we can, I mean, set our reset problem statement you understand clearly the first one factors influencing road accidents in ghana has been done that is modeling uh, road accidents in ghana in accra it's been done so if we can get another topic so please another topic yes Ex i have another topic yes go ahead Exploring the role of behavior change interventions in promoting hygienic practices in market areas. So, um, come again. Exploring the role of behavior change. So, behavior changes and what? Interventions in promoting hygienic practices. Interventions and hygienic practices. In, promote, in promoting hygienic practices. Yes, I know, but I'm I'm typing the keywords. I don't necessarily okay. need to, to, to type the same area. topic. Yes. Uh, you type key key words. That's why I'm using behavior, behavioral changes uh, and Hygienic practices. In market in, areas. In mar Ghanaian markets. So let's say in Ghanaian markets. That that is more specific. Mm -hmm. Good. So let's enter and see. Good. So on this topic, this one talks about water sanitation, behavioral change. Okay. Um limiting spread of COVID in Ghana. This is talking about transportation. Yeah, please, we are not seeing your current screen. We are seeing the modeling, the trend of road traffic accidents in Accra. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So this is what I search for. Okay, I search for uh, behavior, that's behavior, Behavior change interventions and hygienic practices in Ghanaian markets. That is what I said for. Okay. 
And these are the outcomes we are getting. The first one is on water, sanitation, and hygiene. Okay. The second one is limiting spread of COVID-19 diseases in transport. It's talking about transportation. The next one is food beliefs and practices in urban poor communities in Ghana. Implications for health. Okay. Now, impact of demand and supply and hygiene promotion intervention on sustained behavioral change in and health in Ameria. Okay, so it's still nowhere near our topic. Behavioral change interventions and hygienic practices. But this topic here, okay, um, Hygiene promotion intervention and sustained behavioral change, okay, is related to your study. So, which means that you have to go to that study, okay, because it's a very written study, and that becomes one of the sources of your study, okay, after you have read through and you realize that it's related to what you want to talk about. But, except this, it was in Ethiopia. Yes, it doesn't matter. Okay, there are points that this person will make. You, you get it. When you look at the topic where it says, by trained natural leaders in Ghana. So the topic even has something to do with Ghana. I'm sure they have made citations to the Ghanaian contest. So as you are reading their work, you also notice people who have done similar works related to your topic from Ghana and from Africa. Mm -hmm. So it, this work is going to be very important for, for your study. That is what I'm trying to download. This is the work. Can you see it? Can you see the work? Yes, sir. Ah. So he talks about, this is in Ethiopia, so a developing country. And I yes, don't think the situation should be far different than from Ghana. Okay. So you, you read carefully and then find out what this person is doing. I'm going to save this work because um, when we get to literature review on your particular topic, we will need a study. So I'm going to save it. Um, let me bookmark first so i'm going to bookmark the page and then i'll teach you something else to do when we get to um, literature review so we've saved this document we'll be using it in due course another thing we can do is apart from working on um, Google Scholar, okay, for similar research to your topic. You can also make use of the search engine in, um, in the ATU database, okay? We also have a lot of information from ATU. ATU is subscribed to a lot of search engines like Taylor and Francis and so on, Academia and so on and so forth. So we can also go there Google Scholar is one search engine on its own. So we can go back to our own ATU, okay, page, and then access our library. So I'm going to my ATU.net. Uh, 